All right, I've got two coils on. I'm about to put my third coil on here. Once you've got the first coil blended, it's okay to not blend them all until you have like two or three coils on. Probably wouldn't go any more than three here. Now I'm gonna keep measuring all the way around before I kind of attach my coil. Now I know that it needs to come out a little bit all the way around. Clay does stretch, so you might be able to actually like pull your clay to stretch a little bit if it's not quite the right size. Um, now, one thing that you should note is that every time you put a clay coil on top of another one, it needs to be at least halfway on the one that's below. So any sort of plan you have for any steep angles, as it'll, it'll be okay as long as your steep angles have at least all of your coils halfway on the one below it. And if you can let it dry about a day covered up in your bag um, in between your steep angles, that will help as well. All right, so I've got my three coils on. Now I'm gonna go around and I'm going to actually press them down just a little bit and I'm supporting from the outside. If it were coming in from the inside, you would support from the inside. Uh, but because they're going out, I'm supporting from the outside. There we go. Now, this is what it looks like from the outside. It's got coils on it and from the inside, it's kind of messy. You want it to be nice and smooth. So you're gonna use your tool that has this sort of curved spoon edge. Um, you can use your fingers to do some of your blending, but this tool is going to help a lot. All right, so I'm pushing down on the inside. I'm starting with my bottom coil, and I'm pushing down to sort of blend the clay from the top coil all the way to the bottom coil. Still supporting, I'll show you from this angle too, still supporting the outside. You don't want to have too much slip in here, otherwise it gets kind of hard for your, your finger to grab your clay. You can always, there we go. You can always smooth out your clay or your finger on your canvas and get all that extra slip off of it. But you don't want to use a lot of water in this process other than slipping and scoring your coils together. Um, water makes your clay weak and you don't want your clay to be weak. Now you'll notice that I'm trying to keep pretty consistent with pushing my clay down on the inside. Um, so all of my extra clay from the outside of my coil is going down. I'm gonna even that out by on my other, on my next kind of set of coils on the outside, I'm gonna go up. So I'm pushing clay from this top coil and the middle coil going down. And then on the outside, fingers getting a little slippy, on the outside, I'm gonna go up. I might do this a couple times with the smoothing. And if you don't have a turntable, that's fine. You'll just scoot your tray around. Remember, you're not moving your clay you're sticking it to your tray, leaving it stuck to your tray for a bit. All right, so that's fairly blended on the inside. If I wanna do it more, your finger right now is the best tool, especially the inside. There's something about the inside that your, your rib doesn't do the greatest job with. A lot of times what it ends up doing is it ends up uh, gouging, so your finger does the best job on the inside. Once it gets a little harder, you'll be able to do a little bit more smoothing. All right, so I've got the inside pretty smooth. All of my clay coils are blended, um, and I did that from pushing down on the inside. What am I gonna do on the outside now? 
is I'm going to start pushing up. I have to do this left-handed. So I'm blending up. If you blend down on the inside, blend up on the outside, and vice versa. And what this is doing is this is pushing that extra clay from my coils up and into the crevices. So then instead of having a bunch of bumpy coils on the outside, I'll have smooth, a fairly smooth outside here. And I'm always supporting the other side. So if I'm pushing from the inside or from the outside, I'm supporting on the inside. And I'm going to do this all the way around. With all my coils all the way around every three coils. Almost done. Always support from the inside or the opposite side. There we go. Now once I get it to this point, it's pretty blended, but it's not smooth. At this point, I can start using my finger and I, what I'm doing is I'm just turning with one hand. Maybe you might have to take this on there, but I'm turning with one hand. I'm blending my finger with the other. If you're by yourself, you'll just like use your hand and you'll just scoot it. So if without my tray here, I would just do this. Probably get on, get to where I can have the edge here, and I would just manually turn it. And I'm just really lightly running my finger over, and I'm catching all this extra clay, and I'm not wasting it. I'm adding it to my clay pile that I'll wedge with my other stuff at the end. I like to have it at the end. Edge here. Hopefully you can see that my finger's off to the side here and I'm turning it because it's right at the edge of the table. There we go. Uh, so you'll do that. You can do that with your finger all the way around. I like to set my finger in kind of one spot. And it, what it does is it just kind of acts as a guide. If you've ever seen someone throw on the wheel, this is kind of like a really slow manual version of that. And that does a pretty good job. Um, there are some other tools you can use. Right here, this is a, or a metal rib. Uh, you've got the curved edge. That works really well. What it does is it ends up scraping off a little bit. See this here? You're gonna to wanna to clean it every once in a while or it'll add kind of scratches into the outside. Think of this part as like when you decorate a cake and you're smoothing out the frosting. So you, you're smoothing out the frosting, you're using all the extra stuff to kind of fill the gaps. Start from the bottom, get that smooth, and then work toward the top. Um, at the end of your projects, you're going to be doing a lot more smoothing and you're going to be condensing your clay a little bit more. Um, for right now, this is going to probably get as smooth as you need it to be. 
You can also use like any sort of ID or key card and that will do essentially the same thing. Now I've got these kind of gunks at the top. I'm just gonna either smooth them in or pull them off before I put my next set of coils on. I'll keep doing this and I'll keep checking it with my template up until I get a little bit higher than I need it to be because then I'm gonna cut the rim off here. Oh, upside down, that's better. Um, if it isn't quite reaching, remember that clay can stretch. So if I do this, I can stretch my clay. I want to check it in multiple places. I can stretch my clay. To meet my outside. Then I'm going to let this dry for a little bit. So get as far as you can before um, you put it away for the day. Every time you work on it, you're going to want to make sure that it's smoothed and blended so that when you go to store it, as you're storing it without any like water, um, you're just going to cover it up and seal it. As you're storing it, it's getting harder and harder. Um, so if you were to leave those three coils next time when you work on it, it's gonna, they would be really hard to blend. So before you put it away at, for any amount of time, you want to make sure it's blended um, inside and outside. Otherwise, you will definitely struggle um, to get it done. And then you'll clean up your stuff. Make sure you take all that extra clay and you stick it with your other clay. If it's really, really dry, um, you can spray some water on it, put your clay all together, and then seal everything up in the bag. If you have a wheel like this, a tabletop wheel, um, you can store it by putting your bag on it. And then you can actually tie it underneath. If not, just... Pull this off and then tie it underneath or tie it off to the side and let it go for the day. Clean up your tools and then you're all done.